Welcome back, Noble Heroes. We return back to the Outrunner, where our characters are considering uh, what secrets they reveal to one another, whether or not they choose to do so. Um, we will go ahead and continue. Uh, Jennifer just spoke to Zarafen about her ancient history uh, with a race of several people called the Wishmasters, which she asked to be like them as an, a wish she made in her early life, um, causing her to change from a normal fairy into a half fairy, half Wishmaster. Um, as to what connection that has to her current powers, we don't know. But perhaps we might find out sometime in the future. Oh, will you? Oh, will you? Uh, we oh. go ahead. Ooh, hot. Oh, baby mouth, no! Oh, I forgot, I was just spoiling. <laughs> I just wanted it so badly. Sorry, continue. Just we continue. Injuries. Um... The night is getting very late. Those of you who do sleep are starting to get quite tired. But uh, does anybody in the party want to continue with where they were going? I was planning on going. Is Isaac just chilling out on deck? And is Zarafen going towards him? He nodded. Uh, so yes, Zarafen, however, is going to sort of gesture with his head in the direction of Isaac, suggesting that perhaps he would like to come with him. Um... She specifically said she's not going near him until he gets rid of the item. Okay. Isaac, Zarafen says, as you begin to head up the stairs away from Western. Zarafen, good to see you again. He nods. Uh, me and Juniper were just discussing a plan, and I wanted to get your insight into it. The viability of it, he says. We were thinking about that eye that you're carrying on you, he says. Well, that's good to hear, because I certainly have no idea what I should be doing with it. I spoke to the dragon Ferric about an hour ago. He gestures out about a hundred feet uh, to the dragon slowly drifting on the gale, surrounded by the drakes and the, um, the kenku. Uh... And you see that Klebe is among them at the moment, um, seeming to ride his own drake and getting some lessons on how to do so from sounds like falling rain or new falling rain. Um, he is going to look down at the eye and Zarafen says, Ferric is going to sleep here along with the drakes, but then in the morning he's going to head back ahead of us to report back to Estrid. I was thinking that perhaps we might allow him to take the eye with him. What say you? Out of game. Where does the crew intend on going in the morning? We're also going back to Bridgewalk, right? Correct. <clears throat> Isaac is kind of spinning the disc horizontally in his hands, and he looks up to him and says, I'm worried. As much as I'd like to be rid of this thing now, whether we throw it into the pits of the ocean or we give it to someone to take back to Bridgewalk, items like this have a habit of falling into the wrong hands as soon as you take your eyes off of them. I'm afraid that's what would happen if we gave it up now. Do you expect that Ferric would lose it to somebody? I'd expect that most anyone would lose it to somebody given that that somebody is as powerful as Dambleth, potentially. My guess from past knowledge of Dambleth is that he is going to go back to his base of operations. As he is out in the middle of the <clears throat> ocean, I imagine that will take him at least a couple of days. He says, we'll probably be back to Bridgewalk by the time he even arrives at a base where he can give orders. This thing is clearly dangerous to June. I'm simply concerned that... I don't know, I'm just nervous about giving it up. But if you have faith that it'll be safe, I believe in it. We can give it to him to take back in the morning. 
Ferric has long served the realm of Bridgewalk, he says, ever since he was a wormling. I trust him. And so do I. Should I hold on to it for the night, or should I give it to you? I was going to fly it out in that direction just to keep it off the boat. Okay, Isaac hands it over to him. As he takes it from you, your passive insight will mark that he clearly considers this a gesture. He will take the eye. He said, I must say, Zarfan, it is a strange sensation speaking to you again after speaking to whoever that was in the vineyard. But I know it's you. Speaking on that matter, I would like to, I guess the word would be debrief you on a closer examination of those words that you spoke with that doppelganger. But we can do that <clears throat> in the coming days. I'll be here. I'm not very busy. Speaking of which, I think that Jennifer wanted to talk with you. He says as he's going to look around the deck and then uh, sort of make sure that the meek aren't up on deck before he takes wing to the air and flies out. Uh, Bali is going to sort of, as he takes off, uh, there is a a particular shot of his backside, uh, which he will give sort of an appreciative whistle outwards towards, and then look and over eyes meaningfully. Totally flick towards her as she hears that faint whistle, <laughs> and she smirks. Um, you'll see sort of an arched eyebrow from Bali in your direction, Jennifer. Uh, almost as if to say, now I see what it's all about. <laughs> Roland, are you going to sleep on the deck tonight? No, I'll probably sleep with the meek down there. And Isaac, Jennifer, do either of you connect? Uh, yeah, June is going to walk over to Isaac after she sees him fly away with it. <laughs> <laughs> Scared the hell out of me. That was awesome. I didn't know how long this conversation. As you approach, Isaac uh, looks to you and says, "Juniper, I'm sorry about what happened. I didn't know what that was. Well, I still don't know what that is, but clearly it was upsetting." June smiles and says, "Of course you didn't. Why would you? I appreciate your." Willingness to hand it off to Rafe, though. It wasn't easy. She smiles. Are you planning to head to bed now? After the events of today and tonight, I don't know. I think I'll stay up here a while longer and watch the water. Would you care for a game of chess? I, too, do not feel quite settled enough to sleep. Daniel, can I work the ship and also play chess it would be difficult but steering the ship at this point is pretty easy there isn't anything out here okay that would be nice something to take my mind off things she smiles and then uh where are you planning on do, do, do you indicate where you're planning on doing this tonight like guiding the ship like here so for the sake of, like, looking normal to other people, when he's controlling the ship, he does so while touching the wheel, so it looks like he's actually driving the ship. Gotcha. Okay, so wait, so we're up here with <laughs> Bali and Euphemia as well. Bali is going to give up the wheel because it's getting too dark for her to steer. Gotcha. Euphemia would have gone down to talk to the meek to make sure they were settling in, and also to see about assigning the big guy to some duties. Gotcha. <laughs> But All right. What Isaac will suggest is that he continues watching yeah. the water, but we can play by dictating our moves verbally. So, you know, knight to A2 and so on and so forth. You see a chessboard appear just floating in the air, and it's sideways so that we can easily see it, and all the pieces just seem to be stuck by it. She says, 
dictate as you will. She then sits on the edge of the, the boat and appears to be reading a book. <laughs> Isaac just kind of laughs at the sight of this. My, that's awfully convenient. As you all begin to play chess, uh, <laughs> you will note Theric and the Drakes are going to wing to the ship. And Euphemia, Theric, is going to, as quietly as possible... It is getting a bit exhausting on the wing. If we could sleep on the ship, I think my plan is to head back to Bridgewalk in the morning. By all means, if you all can fit, please rest. He's going to sort of like carefully scoot boxes out of the middle of the deck with his tail and hands and then sort of curl up like Shadow does. Um... Shadow, for her part, has sort of like is climbing a bit awkwardly up onto the deck from the sea where she has grabbed a very large fish um, and is eating it. Uh, Klebe will come back and begins to dictate a bunch of noises in your direction uh, that seem to suggest excitement from a child learning a new skill. Do later. Sorry, just remembered it. The meek are going to come back up um, just before the dragon and drakes land, and looks like a rabbit is going to stare, sort of mesmerized at the sideways chess game beginning between Isaac and Jennifer up on the wheel. Uh, but then they are going to give big, heavy yawns as they head down to sleep. When the dragons curl up, uh, a sort of calm, steady breathing takes over the ship. And as the drakes land, there it becomes more difficult to talk as they tend to hiss and sort of sputter in their sleep as they curl up near the railings. Um, and the Kenku are going to... Uh, cuts paper is going to land, and as he does so, um, you are going to hear his dreaming breath come out of him like a gale coming across a field. Uh, and you will learn that older, perhaps um, more veteran grizzled Kenku tend to make very odd noises in their breathing as they sleep. <laughs> Um, so you'll occasionally hear a barge, uh, which scares the hell out of Isaac. Um, <laughs> and you'll hear the uh, laughter of children come from one of them, uh, which can be a little creepy. You know, if anybody else is out on the water, that's going to sound real scary. Mm -hmm. It's a great intimidation tactic. I think it's not foggy. All right. Um, and if you guys are playing chess, why don't you give me uh, an intelligence check? Jennifer, as you have previously proven to be the queen of chess on board, why don't you roll with advantage? Did you bring the book out to read so that you were both equally distracted? Maybe. Uh, mm -hmm. In addition, you eventually you notice that the book is actually floating next to her, and she seems to be working on a project as well. Of course she is. Uh, you notice that she seems to be carving on a small amulet of some sort. <clears throat> Can I roll history and try and identify what she's carving on the amulet? Yeah, be a 30, because it's not a history check. All right, never mind. Although, you can roll an Arcana check if you'd like. Uh, DC... I don't know, probably... It'd be pretty high, I'd say. I rolled a 17, so I probably don't get it. Ah, okay. Uh, you recognize that she seems to be enchanting a personal item, but you can't quite grasp how she's doing it, because it's not purely magic. Okay. <laughs> For the chess game, I rolled a 13. 
Uh, I have a 17. Okay. Twice, actually. Uh, it is... It is a frustrating game for you, Isaac. You are on the back foot from pretty much move three and trying to break out of an Armacor's lock, which is a uh, particularly deadly chess strategy employed by usually people from Pendulum. Um, and eventually, just frustratingly, the lock is going to uh, take the game for Jennifer on uh, about move 35. Well, that's longer than I lasted last time. And then you're going to hear Isaac like frustratingly mumble something about bringing some new board games onto the ship under his breath. <laughs> <laughs> she says, well, any suggestions? I have quite a few. Oh, do you? Well, perhaps in the morning or in the coming days I'll ask if I can take a look at your collection. It's usually better just to simply ask which one you're looking for. So your collection is probably pretty big. Well, it's just annoying to get out. Oh, I see. Uh, Isaac will think of something unique to Selenox that he played there. Can you think of anything, Daniel? Um, shoots and arrows. <laughs> <laughs> Although I guess a lot of Selenox games were just like casino gambling, so. Truth. Um, you guys could start a card game. Like a, like a regular card game or something. Uh, she will bring out a deck of cards and say, how about just cards? Ah, now this is more to my liking. And he's going to take the cards and start shuffling them rather adeptly. Roll a wisdom check. Both of us? Mm-hmm. 18. I'll probably kick my butt this time. 17, actually. <laughs> An excitingly close game. Uh, as you all play off into the night, is there anybody who is against me speeding up time? There is one thing I want to do before we get back to Bridge Walk. Other than that, no. Is big proves quite excited and malleable uh, towards chores. Um, Roland, you uh, have a lot of reminiscing conversations with Western, uh, where she keeps bringing up old missions that the two of you went on a long time ago, of which the details of you had mostly forgotten by this point. Um, Ferric does take the eye back along with the drakes. However, the next morning there is an event. Uh, Roland, as you are up early, you and Hero are up on deck doing your morning training. Uh, it is a little more difficult, but you have less people today. Bali slept in because she, she went late on the wheel. Um, but you are surrounded by sort of half-dreaming drakes when you are going to see Solo, the golden, looks like a rabbit, Neek, come up on deck. She is yawning and has her eyes shut as she sort of walks up oh, onto no. the deck. Um, and you are going to see as she opens her eyes and catches on the dragon in front of her. Her eyes are going to fill entirely with black. Uh, her head sort of, her eyes sort of rove left then right. And you're going to see the drakes are sort of like making screeching noises and looking rather fearsome with their mouths hanging open and their long forked tongues hanging out, especially the one with the skull for a head. Um, and as Hero's sort of going to like look around, he sees the situation. Uh, however, both of you are very startled when she is going to pop and she will transform almost instantaneously into a gigantic golden rabbit. Huh? Well, that's awkward. How big? Uh, she is as big as looks like a rabbit is. So it is about a 40 pound rabbit. Wait, you mean... 
Wait, so she's just... She went from being a a meek... To a, to a rabbit. golden rabbit? <laughs> yes, correct. As soon as she pops into the rabbit form, you're going to see one of the drakes sort of... <laughs> and his eyes immediately a lot as he opens his mouth, uh, twists his head up, and is going to take wing, screeching towards the gigantic rabbit. Uh, you will hear his hunt cry as the other ones are also going to wake up in a frenzy. Uh, and you see that as a rabbit, when it sees a predator, it stands still. How, uh, how close are we to intervene? Uh, you are about ten feet away, and there are drakes coming from every direction. Are we between the drakes and looks like a rabbit, or are they close? You are. You could What's be the... between. Uh, if you would like to intervene, please roll an athletics check. Um, how close am I to Hero right now? You are adjacent to him. Can I throw Hero onto one of the drakes? That would be difficult. I would need a hit roll using Hero as your weapon. So it you would be an it. improvised weapon. So, so it's just your strength score without your proficiency bonus. Because I think he, you I, would I probably would need to roll thirteen to succeed. What's your strength? Five. Plus five. Mm -hmm. You could do it. Think about it. Because I would think I would try to throw him onto a drake to try to... And then I would try to run to intervene between the others. Okay. Is that what you want to do? Yeah. All right. Go ahead and roll a strength attack roll. <laughs> 17. <laughs> All right. We're going to throw Hero. Uh, and he he is going to like, oh, as you pick him up. <laughs> um, and you toss him towards the drake, and he's going to sort of land and hit the side of the drake, uh, hanging on to a small saddle that it has on its back. As you rush forward, give me an athletics check. Uh, your DC goes up by two for the, the pre-move of throwing hero, and your DC is going to be 16. <gasps> yep, I failed it. All right. Uh, as you jump forward, the drakes, so three of them are going to make attack rolls against the gigantic rabbit. Yeah, I rolled an 11. All right. You are going to watch as looks like a rabbit is lacerated by drake claws scratching across her flanks. As soon as she is touched, however, she is going to begin to, like, scrabble uh, her paws, sort of scrunching in back and forth very quickly, uh, like a dog running on tile. Um, and she will then take off towards the stairs, escaping the batch of drakes that hit her. Um, and you will see a deep, long cut appear on her back. Uh... you will hear an absolutely booming voice uh, as Fyrick is going to basically bark out an order. Uh, and it sounds like... Um, it honestly sounds like dynamite going off in your ear. Uh, but the drakes are going to, like, start and then sort of, like, fall over each other uh, as the order, you guess it's stop or something... Uh, but it's in another language, probably Draconic. Well, no, wait, well you would speak Draconic, so yeah, so he's going to... But it was just so loud. <laughs> um, the drakes are going to kind of fall over each other, and he rolls an animal handling check. Okay. All right, all of the drakes are going to cease, um, and Hero is going to kind of pull on the reins of the one you threw him onto, uh, as it sort of curves, since it was a little slower in flight, it could have, like, curved quickly to go after her. Uh, looks like a rabbit. But um, looks like a rabbit is going to head upwards uh, where Isaac is sitting. Um, Isaac, you were sort of in a daze up until the point at which 
the booming voice of Firic echoed out over the water for a thousand miles. Um, and that started you instantly to the crazy situation that's happening in front of you. You see the rabbit bolt up the stairs and go and hide, uh, sort of just like under a little ledge of railing adjacent to the edge of the banister. Um, so she's just like maybe five feet from you, but behind you to the right. What does Isaac do? Does Isaac have a full grasp of what's going on? Uh, you basically see a giant cluster of wings and claws in the center of the ship down below on the deck. Roland uh, is sort of like, he sort of has like his arm around like a drake head and is like pulling it, um, trying to get it to stop biting the other ones. Uh, and Firic has sort of thrown himself upwards, his wings coursing towards the sky in a very imposing visage. But that's about all you know. Okay. Do I see the wounds on the rabbit? You turn and do see that it is shaking with fear. What in the pits is happening with these dragons? Roland, can you get those under control? I'm trying. Roll an advantage to animal handling check, sir. Uh, 23. All right. Uh, just as Isaac is saying that, you are gaining a measure of control now. Uh, the Kenku have woken up and are pulling on the reins. Um, you, you don't know exactly what this is, but you, you can recognize like a uh, hunt frenzy from animals. Um, and you know that the Kenku themselves are not, they're just not physically big enough to stop a, a charging drake. Um, so you're, you, you put your biceps to the test in the situation and certainly gain your workout for the afternoon. Uh, but you do gain a handle on the situation. Isaac, you turn and see the golden rabbit. Okay. Um, Isaac is going to approach it slowly and try to not be intimidating and coax it out telling he's going to be telling it hey i let me help you i'm gonna try and heal you roll an animal handling check i don't recognize this animal as looks like a rabbit do i it is the same golden color as her but beyond that, it is a rabbit and not a meek. Okay. Oh, it man. is a big I bunny. A, I rolled a 20 total. Not a crit, but 20. The rabbit is just going to stand there. But it does stop shaking. It now looks like it's trying to hide when you turn your eyes on it. Uh, but you are you are basically adjacent to it at this point. Okay. Although you do see that it sort of twitches suggesting that at any moment it could run. Isaac is going to... How severe do the wounds look? Or is it just scratches? No, it's, uh, it, it, is, it is openly bleeding. Isaac's going to... Um... Sorry, I need to pull up my spell sheet. Euphemia, from inside your cabin, you hear... She actually, I had meant to say this, she would have taken Klebe and she would have slept down with the rest of the crew last night. Then everybody has heard Ferric's word, instantly waking up anybody with, with a semblance of, of caution to their sleep, uh, which I would describe Euphemia as possessing. Uh, so as you hear that, Hero, uh, I assume my Hero isn't down here, uh, Zarafen is going to sort of get up and look over across the way at you, uh, and then says, and then is going to get up <laughs> and uh, she's rush gonna towards grab the door. Pearl and just run. Like she's half undone. She looks terrible. She's got Pearl with her and she's going. Bali, for her part, is going to like start, and as she like turns, uh, she's just going to like. Onto the floor from her cot. 
um, lands like halfway on her chest in a rather painful looking fall. Uh, and uh, I'm going to assume that Jennifer is also uh, getting ready for a potential battle as you all rush up onto the deck. Isaac, you said you were going to try to do what to the rabbit? He's going to stay adjacent to it and try and kind of hide it with his body. And he's going to um, sing a soothing song to it as he tries to cast Healing Word on it. An old lullaby that your mother, Maria, used to sing to you comes out a little less good than she used to sing it, at least to your ears. But you reach out and please give me the healing for healing word. 11, 11 points. You see the wound disappear. And as the wound mends, the rabbit's nose is going to twitch on the front. Um, and then both you and Roland will witness the rabbit turn back into a meek. Am I still holding on to the drake in the silence? You have three reins in your hands from the drakes, and Hero uh, is sort of soaring around in a big arc out in the, the sea, uh, and you can see, like, the panic on his face. Um, this is what we come on deck to. And Let's you go. all come up on deck <laughs> and see exactly that. Isaac really wants to be like, it wasn't me this time. <laughs> <laughs> Gain inspiration, Isaac. Thank you. Uh, and also, um, but yeah, you come up and you find that situation. Uh, and Furic is going to look down towards you. What in the pit is going on? She says. Are he you... looks at Roland uh, to see if you're going to start the explanation. And for a moment, you see that the dragon doesn't quite know how to explain it. Well? Messy morning. She's going to look around. It would appear, Ferex says, that there is more to the Golden Meek's fate than we thought. He says. The Golden Meek? He's going to Where? gesture as you see, looks like a rabbit stand meekly up on the upper deck. And then, uh, Isaac, you are startled, probably, when she is going to hug your leg tightly. Probably so tightly you could, like, lift her up if you bench your knee. <laughs> uh, Isaac's going to kind of squat a little and be like, it's all right. We're going to be watching over you. There's nothing to be afraid of. <laughs> are you a hero? She says, looking at you. <laughs> if this were a cartoon, his mouth would be like a squiggly line. His eyes would be <laughs> uh, he'll pat her on the head and say, Yes, I am. You can come to me for help. She is going to nod. You, you remember your amulet is currently on, and you believe it must be affecting her. I didn't think that amulet would actually come in handy, like in a, a practical manner. I don't trust that amulet. No, me either. Me either. It's a... One hundred percent don't trust that shit. I mean, if it's from Pit, why would we trust anything mm -hmm. from Pit? Exactly. You. Uh, uh, Hero is going to sort of land the drake uh, and then hop off as Ferric turns towards Juniper, Zarafen, Euphemia, and Bali uh, and says it would appear as though she has a fated fear response. He tries to say it quietly, but it's almost impossible for him so large to say anything in a whisper. I apologize for the 
startling starts to the morning. Honestly, it's better than some wake-ups I've had. She'll walk towards the wheel. Western is going to give you this, like, kind of outraged expression and says, Like what? Stories I could tell you, she says. Pirate, remember? And then she walks over towards the wheel. Is the girl okay? She asks Isaac. You're going to see a couple of fearful tears rolling down the Golden Meek's face as she clings desperately to Isaac's leg. It, if she's still clinging to my leg, Isaac will kind of reach down and kind of lift his cloak and throw it over her so she's kind of concealed. Um, and he's going to whisper to you, she was maimed by one of the dragons, but she's all right now. I think she's still coming down from all the adrenaline. Euphemia looks over the scene for a minute. She seems to have become rather attached to you. I think I just happened to be the one here to help her when she was hiding. Hmm. I'm Interesting. sorry, she says. Sorry? Sorry for what? I didn't mean to get so scared, she says. Euphemia is going to squat down. Go ahead, Isaac. Sorry. No, go ahead. Isaac just takes his hand and like conceals his face. Well, how it's too much. Is she? She's about the same height as you. Mm-hmm. I was. I thought because like she was clinging to his leg. I wasn't sure. She's she's standing. Fine, 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 fine. I won't talk to her knees. <laughs> I'm sorry. Continue, Isaac, and then I'll continue. <laughs> He said he put his hand on his on his robe to kind of, like, grasp her, but that's all he did. Euphemia will lean forward. There's no reason to apologize for fear. Um, she is going to look over towards you. She says, You don't respect people who are afraid. Yuffie looks a little surprised by that. Insight. Does she mean specifically Euphemia? You think she does. (laughs) (laughs) Called you out. Called you out, shit. (laughs) Euphemia says, It's not the fear I don't respect. Fear is an asset that tells us things that could be a threat to us. It's how we learn to react to it. Panicky crybaby who gets scratched when she's afraid. I'm sorry. From what I understand, it was an instinct or fate. As long as I check. Ten. Okay. The only thing that you're able to insight is that she must have been fairly easily able to read that information from you. The fact that Euphemia did not... Doesn't. Perhaps it's something we could work on, then. She says, I just make hats. Have you tried anything else? No. Well, why don't we try, then? You see... The nerves that a, like a 13 year old would have starting a new job. Mm, so cute. She, um, she clearly doesn't actually want to, uh, but you will see that she is too stubborn to not 
to appear so cowardly. So she will uh, say that she will... Actually, you are suddenly going to get a package of emotions delivered directly into your head. You feel her emotions. Um, you feel will probably stagger a little bit. And then she's going to kind of look at you, uh, expecting something. Isaac, you additionally will feel this package of emotion. You know it is not your own. What exactly is in the package of emotion? What you feel you- what I described directly from her. Is that a sensation we've ever felt when interacting with other meek, like, hero? No. Okay. Euphemia will try to shake it off a little bit. Uh, is big is going to come up and he'll sort of reach into Isaac's row, bending over, and pull her out. And then pick her up like a baby and sort of hold her up at his shoulder. And he goes, there, there, it's all right now. He says, thankfully, Roland saved you. He says, turning around and looking at you. Uh, <laughs> yes, you did. Euphemia looks a little frustrated looking at that, kind of like, why can she never figure out how to interact in a supportive way? Like, it's just something that's a little empty from her. She just struggles with it. <laughs> um, you don't know if it's because of what looks like Rabbit did, but you all will suddenly feel uh, a secondary grouping of emotions delivered shipwide. Uh, it's sort of hurled unceremoniously at anybody. Um, is big broadcasts this simple, rather embarrassing vision of what occurred. Um, <laughs> basically, like, in, in the mind of this meek, you see, like, mighty glistening Roland, like, wrestling drinks <laughs> easily. Um, like, casting hero, like, with, like, his pinky to the side. Uh, and then, like, mightily yelling um, this, like, battle cry. Um, you you will see Zarafen sort of, like, he's gonna kind of... <laughs> But that's what you get. <laughs> Very good. Euphemia's gonna snort at that one. <clears throat> well, seems like he certainly did save you. Well, Zara Fence states, it appears as though the situation is over now. He says, are you going to be heading out soon? He asks, I think it is time. Ferrick says, if all of you have nothing more, then I believe I will take the drakes and head back with the Blackwing, he says. He is going to lift off, and the drakes will follow their pack leader, in this case. He takes it? He already had the eye. Um, and is going to take it away uh, before it reacts to Juniper. All right. Um, So, the situation has calmed down. The rest of the day is not going to be nearly so exciting. Uh, June, what are you up to? What is Yuffie doing right now? Euphemia would probably be shaking her head and then walking up to the wheel to relieve Isaac. Probably gesturing to Bali to come on up to the wheel as well. Uh, June is going to head up there as well. And yeah, she'll just come up there as well. Okay. Euphemia will give her like a little nod of acknowledgement as she approaches. It looks like she's clearly looking for you. Oh, then she'll raise an eyebrow at her instead. 
Uh, she's waiting till you relieve Isaac. She would do so. She'd say, thank you for watching the ship last night to Isaac. Captain. And it doesn't cool. even sound grudging. <laughs> That's an upgrade. Uh, Isaac, as he lets go of the wheel and begins to walk off, says, Oh, and Captain, I wanted to say, good job yesterday taking back your ship. She looks like she doesn't know what to do with that compliment. <laughs> and then you see her ever so slightly, there's a little bit of a blush. She's a little, like, charmed by getting that compliment. <clears throat> and then she brushes it off. <sighs> Thank you. We all did well. <clears throat> uh, Isaac will keep walking away, and he descends below deck. Bali takes over the wheel. Okay. She nods at her. Sure. Uh, a moment. Alone. She actually just shrugs. She goes, I have something for you. And she reaches into her actual pocket for once, and she pulls out a chain. It's a gold chain. It's small, and on the end of it there is a pendant. And let me remember exactly what I made it look like. It was a bit a bit ago. Hang on. Okay, it is a small oval pendant, about yay big. And uh, as she hands it to you, you see an image of. All right, so on one side, it's the image of the bow of a ship bursting through a wave. It's, it's small, and it's clearly engraved in the gold. And on the back, there's a whole bunch of very elegantly teeny tiny scripted archantic all over the entirety of it. And she hands it to you, and she says, uh, pinch the pendant between your two fingers. She takes it. She does so. And you hear the sound of creaking timbers, the name of Klebe mm. that he chose. She goes, I know that you can't replicate the sound, so I thought that would be helpful. How's the noise echoes? You're going to see Klebe sort of like look around for who's calling his name. <laughs> Yuffie just gives a little gesture like disregard. He comes over in the direction regardless. I thought it could be helpful. <sighs> She looks like she's about ready to head off. Euphemia grabs her. I owe you thanks. She just kind of raises an eyebrow slightly. Sometimes I think you're more thoughtful than I give you credit for. Thank you. You're welcome. And for saving the ship. And for, you know, saving Bridgewalk and all that. <laughs> June has a very complicated expression on her face right now as she kind of smiles and she goes I can tell it made you uncomfortable I'm sorry well none of us can help the powers we have that's true although some find things more worrying than others. I'm used to it. I don't particularly like it, the feeling. However, I understand. It's one of the reasons I don't usually display my abilities so openly. Euphemia looks down at the amulet for a minute, as if sort of debating on if she's going to ask a question. As you do so, Klebe is going to be like, and you realize that he has some kind of pan pipe in his hands, and he's running towards you with it, like blowing into it. Uh, the pan pipe is clearly like specially made. The tubes up top of the pan pipe fit his beak perfectly. Euphemia is very used to him running to her with random things, so she'll reach down and ask him, what do you have there? He's going to make the sound of falling rain uh, and then holds up. He says, beak pipe. Ah. 
And is this a gift for you to keep? He nods. <laughs> he points off after the d- direction that the Kenku left. And then he's going to turn towards Juniper. Uh, and he's going to show the both of you his new collection of things. <laughs> Juniper, you're going to recognize... Uh, it seems as though the older Kenku gave him, in Kenku culture, each relationship becomes associated with a noise. And often both Kenku who care about one another will carry around something that can make that noise as a representation of their relationship. It appears as though all three Kenku gave him items like this. Um, He is going to take out a little notebook and like flip the page back and forth. And it looks like the page is made out of like papyrus. So it makes a very interesting scratching sound. Um, and then he takes out a little, like, a weird little bell that has a very high-pitched ring. And he sort of, like, rings it annoyingly a whole bunch. Uh, and then he also takes, like, the beak pipe and, and uh, blows into it um, badly. Out of game, remind me what the sound is that Cleeby's name is. What it resembles. The sound of creaking timbers. That's right. Sorry. The sound of creaking timbers. Mm-hmm. So what could... <laughs> Never mind. I'm just wondering how, what he could have given them to imitate that. Uh, you don't well, imagine... Just, I think it's just any noise. Like... Yeah, have you ever heard of those, uh, the people who do sound effects for movies and stuff? They mm-hmm. use, like, real weird things to make sounds. It's mm-hmm. kind of like that. Gotcha. Like, they just pick a random noise. This now represents our relationship. Like, gotcha. that's me and you. Gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. That's me and you. <laughs> like, that's me. <laughs> that's, that's, so that's really cool. Also, uh, you doubt that Klebe knew anything about this tradition. Uh, it's likely that they just have. gave him something. June will explain it to you both. <laughs> well, perhaps when we get back to Bridgewalk, Klebe, you could provide them with some gifts as well. He says, I suppose that's acceptable in Western's world. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> she just flat out laughs at that. June suppresses a smirk. Uh, you hear him go, Isaac, in Bali's voice, and run off towards Isaac to show him. The mood is broken in terms of her discussing yeah. anything with her. She looks at the amulet, looks a little uncomfortable, and then says briefly, Well, we'll I'll continue be, this later. I'll be below deck if you need me. She nods. All right. And we will go ahead and call it for the moment there, Noble Heroes. When we next return, our heroes will be pulling into Bridge Walk. Uh, so, thank you very much. And remember, do try to sit down.